Good morning, it's Naomi. We have bought this house about a year ago, a little bit more. And ever since we have been redesigning, updating the house to make it more our own. And last spring, I painted a mural in our kitchen and I really loved doing it and I really liked how it turned out, but I, I'm, I'm done with it, I'm tired of it. Also, because I think it's a little bit too busy, there's just generally a lot going on in a kitchen what with the sink and the stove and the shelves and the spice rack and the decor. It's just, it's very busy already. And then adding a very busy mural to it is probably not a good idea. Plus, again, I wanted to bring the style from the living room into the kitchen. So the mural had to go. So I've taken everything off of the wall and I primed it twice to get rid of that um, green. <laughs> To just be, to really see something other than just me. When I painted that mural, I also painted over the um, the wall socket cover things. I was really, really hoping that I was able to easily get that paint off. I just let it soak in hot water for a while and then I, I scrubbed it off with a sponge, which actually worked really well. It was a little bit of a struggle, especially on the inside of the, of the socket thingy, but I got it really clean and they look brand new. So that made me happy. <laughs> so I put those back on the wall. I painted that wall exactly the same color as I've used in the living room. Some of you ask me which color it is that I've used and I will gladly tell you. I just think that it is of absolutely no use to you <laughs> at all <laughs> for two very big reasons. First of all, we can only find this color at the hardware store chain that we've got in the Netherlands. So unless you are in the same country as me, I don't think it's going to help you very much. But most importantly, every color looks different in every room, in every house, in every location, depending on where the light's coming from or what is outside your window. It is even different on each wall that you try. So really the only way that you can find a color that you really, really love is to go out and buy paint samples. Also, don't go off of the little paint chip, the little piece of paper that you get with the color on it. Paint a chunk of the wall that you want to paint and then live with it for one or two days, at least enough to have seen a morning and an afternoon and an evening so that you can see exactly what the color does for you, how it makes you feel. That being said, the color I use is a very soft, creamy white, but it's very far off white, really, but very, very soft and warm and cozy white. Yeah, I think that's a good description of it. It's a cozy white. So I apologize for my voice today, which is apparently gone pretty much after a cold. I am planning on putting up a shelf right around here, which I realize is a little bit of a weird height, but I am mostly doing that because I want to be able to hide this wall socket by putting a picture frame or something in front of it. I am also making that a peg shelf. So I've already cut all the wood to size um, and I, I couldn't actually film that in the garage because it is so stormy outside that it's it's so loud So I cut the shelf pieces to size. I also cut these Pegs that will go in there and then I want to do a picture frame molding at the bottom uh, Just to make it a little bit more interesting a little less plain. I cut that too I've got everything right here and then I guess on the top. We're just gonna do something pretty maybe like uh, some artwork or something, some pretty frames. So let's get started on the shelves. So as you can see, I made the bottom shelf a little smaller than the top one, and I'll show you why. This board that we're using is a little thicker than the trim right here, and I figured this would look really weird because it doesn't really connect very well. So I thought if I would just take it a little bit away from the trim, it wouldn't be as noticeable. And I do think this shelf has to go from trim to trim. So I figured we're just gonna try it and see if I can get away with it. <laughs> On the shelf, I marked little dots where I wanted the pegs to go. And I used a spade bit to drill a hole that went about halfway through the wood, just deep enough to be able to put the peg inside of it. So one thing I didn't check before I started drilling holes into this board is if I was having the correct board. So needless to say, I did not. I was supposed to drill the holes into the short one, wasn't I? Am I gonna worry about it? No, I'm just going to cut off a piece of the bigger one and use it as the bottom one. 
And then I'm gonna go back into the garage where I really hoped I didn't have to go anymore because I already cut everything to find another scrap piece of wood and recreate the shelf. I'm an idiot. I glued the top piece onto the bottom piece and then I screwed it tight as well. But these screws were too long. They came out the top of the shelf. They stuck out. So that was a little sad. But then I figured, you know what, I have glued it as well. So I'm just gonna leave the screws until the glue has dried and then I will loosen the screws a little bit so that they're below the surface of the wood because it was only a little bit. So it's fine, it'll work. Then I hang the shelf on the wall before staining it because it was still drying, the, the glue was still drying, but I wanted to get on with the picture frame molding and I wanted that to be exactly in the middle vertically. So I needed the shelf to be up so that I could calculate where the picture frame molding was gonna go. I made little marks on the wall, so I'm pretty sure this is where it goes. All right, let's see. I have to say though, you have to be really, really careful. I made this mistake about Three times? Hang on, I'll show you. Okay. These pieces, right? Very easy. You just cut them to size, 45 degree angle, so that you can get a nice corner. It never occurred to me that in this specific case, there is a higher bit and a lower bit. The higher bit in this case is on the outside of the trim, right? When you put it together like this. I put this on the wall and then I wanted to put the second piece up against it and I realized that they didn't align, they didn't line up. Because the other piece had the thicker, the higher bit on the inside. So I basically just cut it the wrong side around. I have no words. <laughs> I also didn't have enough trim to do it again. So I had to go back to the store, which is always fun. Lots of fun. I, I truly hope that this warning is completely unnecessary for you, but if not, you're welcome. I nailed it to the wall using my nail gun, which is very easy to do because behind the drywall that you see, there's actually a sheet of wood. So everything is very easy to screw and nail into place on this wall, which I really love. I wish all the walls in the house had that actually. So this is 27. It doesn't matter what I've been through. I should go out too, but I still act like I'm 11. I'm not emotionally sound since I left you. No, I don't like to be the bad guy I won't be surprised if I'm the last one now But I had you wear I took the shelf off of the wall, I stained it, and then I glued the three middle pegs in place. I didn't do the outer two because I actually used those holes to screw the shelf into the wall with. So I put it back on the wall and then I actually glued in those two last pegs over the screws. Now, I really, really hope that if I ever want to take this shelf down, I will still be able to get those pegs off. <laughs> Another thing I did, which was actually very important for me to bring the style from the living room into the kitchen, is I ordered some prints. And I will leave the link in the description of where I got the prints that you see in this video, but I actually ordered a lot of them. I actually went through my house and I found all the frames that didn't have any artwork yet. And then I put the pictures into one big Photoshop file and I had a big piece of foam printed because that is cheaper than if I would get a lot of small ones. And then I cut them out and put them in the frames that they were meant for. In this case, I am using two very simple wooden frames that I found at a thrift store. They actually still have the tag on it. It's my favorite kind of price tag. The one that rips when you want to take it off. I... It's okay. I was not gonna use the glass, so that's fine. I take out the original artwork, I put the new artwork in, and then I put the original artwork behind it in case I ever wanna go back to the original. And then I put everything together with a bit of painter's tape. I actually do this with all my old frames. I never secure anything with nails or staples. As long as you're hanging it on the wall and you're not messing with it, it'll be perfectly fine.
Now I realize this is not a very complicated project, it's also not a very original DIY or anything, but I do think that it really spruces up my kitchen a lot, I think it makes it all a little bit more calm and beautiful. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, if you did, press that little subscribe thingy, because that really helps me, so please. And also you can get notified when I upload again, which will be next week. And until then, um, maybe you can watch this video right here. Now let me show you the results of last week's project. I swear I made that bed big enough. But if you're gonna lay in it vertically, then it's not gonna fit.